Hello everyone and welcome to Chris Fix Germany. In today's video we will make a product review of one thermal camera from company Infiray. The product name as you can see in the package P2 Pro. Uh, this company contacted us over a month ago with the question do you want to test our new product? We have a thermal camera for smartphones. And honestly to say exactly on this time I was on the market for a new thermal camera and I said uh, yes you can send me one, I will test it. I'm using the camera now for over a month. This will not be an unboxing video because uh, the camera is already unboxed. I will show you what is in the package inside to have an idea. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's enough. So we have here some manuals and also uh, we have a quote to, to clean the lens. Also what is very, very helpful for many people, the camera comes with micro lens, so with, you don't have to buy this separately. When you buy the camera, this will come inside the package as well. Micro lens uses magnets and can be very easy attached to the camera. You can see just like that snaps on place and stays in place. It's not falling down. Uh, what are the uses of micro lens? For example, if you are working uh, on very small components, very small PCBs like phone repairs, iPhone PCBs and so on, the micro lens will make your life easier because you can take a closer uh, shots with the micro lens. This is very, very helpful uh, for those people who are working on small components. You can buy the camera in two versions. The one version is with USB Type-C for uh, Android devices and I have the version with the lightning connector for Apple devices. I'm using the camera with my iPhone. You have to download the app from Infiray. It, it's available in Apple Store, so it's legal. It's not something to, to worry about. And here you can see how small this camera is. Uh, to compare it with my last camera, which is still working. So I have a Quanli camera as well. I was using this camera for the past six years. I bought the camera back then for around 1000 euros. It was not cheap. So if I have to compare this camera price with my old camera price, this one costs now around 300 euros in Amazon. Is the price which is acceptable. So for the thermal camera, this quality, the price is acceptable. And I think it's also a very good option to go with. The Quanli camera and why, and the question why I was on the market for a new thermal camera is very simple because the Quanli is massive, it's big. If I have to use it, I have to place it right over here because I have to be closer to my power supply. If I want to find the short circuit, I have to inject voltage and also at the same time using the thermal camera. It's massive, the Quanli, and also has cables. Um, one cable is for the power supply, second cable is for the data. The Quanli camera uses Windows software, sometimes it's buggy, sometimes it's not working, I have to make adjustments, I have to troubleshoot what is going on there with IP addresses and so on and so on. Boot time on the Quanli camera is something to talk about as well, around 2 minutes boot time. Here we have a boot time around 10 seconds, much faster. Image quality, I will show you that image uh, couple of minutes later when we are taking a look at a couple of boards but image quality is almost the same so my Quanli camera and Infrared camera have almost the same quality image like pixels and so on here benefits is the picture is smoother and the reaction time is uh, much faster I will show you that as well so let's take my iPhone open the app and the app now it's waiting for us to to connect the camera let's connect the camera plug it in and let's take a look how long it will take to boot. I think it's around 10 seconds, but let's see it together. Yeah, they have a lot of modes, picture modes, and you can tap right over here and select your favorite one. For me and my favorite one is this one. It says Iron Red. Uh, I use this uh, every day on, a, so on every use the camera. I set this mode. The reaction time is very fast, the picture is smooth and also the frame rate is very very good for this size camera and this price range. Um, what we can see more on what kind of functions we have here in the app, we can go through this very very fast. I'm not using a lot here 
but for example what i'm using on a daily basis is this point i want to place one point here in the center in the middle so i can read the temperature on this point you can see the temperatures will appear here on the top left corner on this point you can also place three points and read the temperatures uh, simultaneously on three points to remove the points just tap on the points and they will disappear uh, second function is also you can draw a line for example in the middle of the, of the screen and this will read the temperature on this line also tell you on the top left corner the minimum maximum temperature and also average temperature to remove it again tap on it and we have also frame again the same thing you can draw a frame this will read the temperature inside the frame and tell you the values on the top to remove it tap on it uh, we can take pictures as you can see we can take a video this will everything will be saved on your iphone and you can use it and we have more settings right over here tapping uh, on this corner we have image settings we have a contrast and brightness uh, what we have more let's type one more time so honestly i'm not using those on a daily on a daily basis but you can set a lot of things here we have a high quality image wide range and also automatic switching uh, variable correction as you can see a lot of temperatures more we can adjust the distance from here and so also we can adjust the ambient temperature let's try the thermal camera on some shorted pcbs we have uh, the first one here this one is imd card 6900 xt with the shorted uh, with short circuits on the memory memory controller and also sock rail we can double check that with the multimeter in into resistance mode measuring those three rails short circuit here here and the sock rail should be also shorted and yes it is uh, we're going to inject voltage and using the thermal camera as you can see the voltage injection tool it's set to one volt and we are going to use one volt for every single board for our tests connecting the ground of course to ground and taking the thermal camera as you can see the the settings are the same i am using the iron red settings here for the covers and we are going to touch uh, the sock rail with one volt injection uh, we can see also that we have some of uh, some reflections on the metal surface or the metal frame of the gpu chip and also from the gpu die we can tilt the camera just a little bit to get rid of the reflections this works always and touching the sock rail as you can see immediately we can tell where the shorted area is on the gpu chip so this corner right over here is shorted and so this is shorting our sock rail this was completely enough for me to tell the customer that the card has a broken gpu chip and uh, this saves a lot of time without thermal camera to find this problem it's uh, very very difficult we can also uh, double check what kind of temperature we are getting on these hotspots but let's try on a different pcb i will place this on the side and let's for example take uh, one nvidia card this one uh, considering that we don't have a two ram chips over here this card is 3080 from nvidia and as you can see i have marked uh, all important chips on the pcb with a marker which means that they are all damaged let's take the multimeter one more time uh, see what kind of short circuits we have here and using the thermal camera again to double check memory is shorted uh, pex rail is missing the pin doctor but we can measure it it shows uh, 4.3 ohms which is normal reading and checking again also the 1.8 volts again missing uh, inductor it reads around 300 ohms which is again normal reading so our short circuit is on the memory rail let's inject one volt again and see what is getting hot uh, for these cards the memory rail is normally working on 1.3 to 1.4 volts we are going to inject less here one volt and hopefully we can see uh, what is going on here again i can inject voltage for example we have a memory rails right over here this one this one and those one so here on the bottom side we have one more 
I'm going to inject voltage right over here and taking a look under the thermal camera. Again, here we have a, a reflection from the metal frame and also the GPU die. This should be absolutely no problem for us. Injecting voltage right now. And what we can see, we have three of the RAM chips completely shorted. So this RAM chip, this RAM chip and also this RAM chip, they are uh, getting hot and they are shorted. So let's use the point, place one point in the middle, just like that. And let's point only on this RAM chip on this corner, see what kind of temperatures we will get here. As you can see, we are reading around 33 degrees. So 33 degrees. We have a room temperature around now for a, around 24 degrees and we are able to, to get a reading of 32, 34 degrees on this RAM chip. So if you are trying with your fingers, for example, when I'm placing my fingers right over here and inject voltage, I cannot feel that. So there is absolutely no difference for me. We can also use alcohol. Let's make this wet. Inject voltage one more time. As you can see, almost nothing happened. So you cannot uh, find this short circuit with alcohol and also using your fingers. See that? Alcohol stays there because it's not hot enough to, to make a difference. Here comes the thermal camera. It's very effective way and very fast way to find the short circuits. Here again, we can tell the customer uh, from experience when the RAM chips are shorted, almost always the memory controller, which is integrated in the GPU chip, is shorted as well. So this card is no fix. Uh, we can take uh, the next one. For the next one, we have one very beautiful, it was very beautiful EVGA card. This one is a 3080 Ti. This X on the GPU die means that the die is broken, most likely shorted. Let's take the multimeter, check it again, see what is going on here. Checking the memory rail. This time it's not that short, we have 4 ohms uh, to ground. This is very interesting because um, dead short circuits are very easy to find. So it doesn't matter which thermal camera you're using, you always find the short circuit. So if you have a reading zero ohms to ground, injecting voltage, every thermal camera should be capable of that. But when you have a higher uh, ohms reading, for example, like this one, four ohms, this is uh, not for every thermal camera. This is difficult because the temperature difference, if you inject here uh, one volt, the component which is causing this short circuit, so this low uh, ohms reading, will not be super hot, will be maybe just a little bit hotter than the rest of the components. So you need a good uh, thermal camera to find this component. We will see what will happen now. Uh, measuring also the PEX rail. The PEX is not shorted and the reading is good. And we have the 1.8 volt, uh, which is shorted. So again, connecting the ground, we are still using one volt for the injection voltage. Unlock the phone waiting to boot and you can see again uh, I like this one because it go fast the only thing that I don't like for example is that um, every time when it boots I have to manually select the mode which I like and uh, this is something really I don't like about this app um, I would like if I have if I if I was able to save my settings to save my mode and every time when I boot, this will be set for me, but okay, I can live with that. I can make these settings uh, every time. It's not a big deal here. So again, let's take a look at the whole board. We have the reflections and everything from the GPU die. I will leave the phone in this angle and touching the 1.8 volt shorted rail with one volt. Again, you can already see where is our short circuit. Let's take a closer look and remove the reflections uh, by changing the angle. And right over here on the GPU die, this corner. So this corner almost always is causing the short circuit on the 1.8 volt. Uh, many times we can also see right over here in the middle 
on the bottom side um, hotspot from 1.8 volt short but uh, many cases the short circuit is coming from this corner so we have four ohms reading on the memory rail let's take a look how the camera will perform and with finding this short circuit this will be interesting to see i can touch the memory rail right over here on the top because from the factory here we don't have a driver mosfet on this area and also there is no inductor much easier for me and let's uh, touch this with one volt as you can see i already see the faulty component removing the probe and touching one more time as you can see the faulty component is right over here this driver mosfet is, is getting warm let's do this one more time touching and removing the probe touching and removing the probe absolutely clear clearly visible which component is faulty uh, i will touch show you the thermal image and see what kind of current draw we have we have less than one amp one amp at one volt this is one watt one watt of energy and this camera is capable of uh, to catch this component this is impressive really impressive let's use the point for example in the middle again and let's take a measurement on the pcb just we have 26 degrees 27 degrees this side on the pcb so let's use this side again 26 to 27 degrees let's see how hot this component gets and uh, to see what kind of temperature difference we have here maybe i will turn the camera just like that to be in frame and touching one more time here let's try to to set it it's very difficult as you can see we have 30 37 degrees 37 degrees so the board has 27 on the on the faulty component we have 37 this is 10 degrees difference and the camera is able to catch that and let me tell you what i like and what i dislike about this product after one month of use starting with the picture quality really impressed so image quality frame rate reaction time and how smooth the picture is uh, for this price range this is the maximum you can get really believe me i'm pretty sure that uh, there are a lot of products so there are more products in this price range but the inferior i think offers the best image quality from all second is the micro lens micro lens comes in the package you don't have to buy this separately a very big plus again for the people who are working on small components and uh, smartphones third is the app uh, very nice functions included there a lot of settings uh, a lot of color um, modes and so on and the only thing that i don't like about is not the product is the app it's that uh, every time when i open the app it's not saving my settings from the previous session and i have to uh, select manually all modes again this take a couple of seconds i know it's not a big problem they can fix that very fast in the future update but for now this is the only thing that i don't like overall if you are now on the market for a thermal camera in this price range around 300 euros I can strongly recommend Infrared P2 Pro. They told me last week that uh, on 11th of July in Amazon is a Prime Day and Infrared offers 20% off on, on the Prime Day. So use the links in the description below if you want to buy one. On 11th of July, Prime Day of Amazon, you will get extra 20% off. This means if the camera costs 300 euros, you will get it for 240 on this day this is really amazing offer and as usual thank you for watching i hope you learned something new if you need a repair check the links in the video description and we will see us in the next one bye